Shabbat Shalom, Saints of God. Shabbat Shalom. How are you doing today? Shabbat Shalom. Please do accept my apologies for being late, but I'm your sister, Dalila dos Santos, here to deliver the word of our Lord Jesus without compromise. I invite you all to hide under the shadow of the Almighty and seek refuge. Sister Chichi, Shabbat Shalom and welcome. Brother Just King J, Shabbat Shalom and welcome Sister Michelle Toya, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom Sister Hebrew Girl, Shabbat Shalom Sister Portia Sleek, welcome Sister, Sister Stephanie, Bom dia minha querida irmã, e como está? Sister Jacqueline Bogle, Shabbat Shalom, my sister, how you doing? Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom Sister Emily Jackson, Shabbat Shalom, Sister Andrea Watson. Shabbat Shalom, Sister Titi Toure. How are you doing today, my sister? Sister D, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Twin. Shabbat Shalom, Nosi for Hadebe. Shabbat Shalom, Maps. Shabbat Shalom, Sister Bella. Shabbat Shalom, Brother Jerome. Shabbat Shalom, Sister Jacqueline Bogle. I'm okay, Saints. I it was I was just a bit late because I was chatting with Sister Lori that wasn't here yesterday. And before I go further, I just want to thank you for praying for her yesterday because she wasn't in. She had a problem with her phone and she couldn't connect to the live stream. Nevertheless, Saints, because the Lord is faithful and the prayers of the righteous availeth much. She's back again. And thank you, thank you, saints, for praying. So I was actually catching up with her, finding out how she's faring. And then that made me slightly late. But saints, you know that I have a commitment with Almighty God and to his children, his servants. So I wouldn't leave you hanging. And nevertheless, saints, this live stream is going to be longer. I'm home today and... Don't worry, the 15 minutes will be well compensated. So help me God. Brother O Joseph, Shalom, Shalom, Sister Lorian, Lorian Baker, a.k.a. our sunshine here on this live stream. Brother Anthony Munene, Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Saint Sister Rose, Shabbat Shalom, Harry, Harry, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Sister Golden Lattes, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Sister Nzia Raj. Shabbat Shalom, Saints. I'm Sister Michelle Bryan. Shabbat Shalom, Sister Tamisha. You sent me a message on WhatsApp. Don't worry. I'll see you this Saturday weekend. We will arrange. You text me when you're ready. All right. Saints, those of you who texted me and needed to speak to me directly, I was very ill and I, I, I didn't want to... You know, talk to the saints or pray for the saints and coughing and unwell. So now that I'm well again, the normal um, counseling, deliverance, prayer via WhatsApp will resume this Saturday. All right, saints, sister Layla, right? Shabbat shalom, my sister. So those of you send me a message asking me, oh, sister Dalila, I need to, you need pray, I need counseling, don't worry, I will resume everything back to normal this Saturday, because you saw my, my problem, I was coughing and I wasn't well, so I wanted to be well first, and then be able to resume with all of the activities that I normally carry on, sister Kita, shalom, sister Aseret, shalom, sister Meredith O'Brien, shalom, sister Shane, Shabbat, shalom, saints, Today is the Sabbath of the Lord. Brother O Joseph, shalom, my brother. How you doing? Precious saints, get your Bibles ready. Pen and paper to take some notes because you're going to need today these scriptures as I always do. Write the scripture down um, so that um, you can fact check what has been preached. Any preacher that is not giving you the scriptures, that is a problem. Because how are you going to back up what they are saying. How are you going to be able to read it for yourself and confront whether if the, what the preacher is saying is the word of God or something made up? You need your pen and paper. It's important to take notes, all right? 
Um, I want to once again thank you all saints for praying for me. As you can see, I'm doing much better today. Yesterday I was doing well, but today I'm even better. So thank God, number one, and the saints also for standing in the gap for me. Thank you for praying for Sister Lori yesterday. Your intercession made a big difference. Uh, she really needed intercession and the Lord honored our prayers and she's back. Saints, the title for this live stream is, Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Some of you hear your faith and your confidence in God is zero. Some of you, your faith and confidence with God is 50. Some of you, your confidence in God, your faith in God is 100. No matter the case, where is your faith? Some of you here that have been asking God to increase your faith. Oh Lord, I noticed that I lack in the department of faith. And I need you to help me, Lord, to have faith. When I am confronted with trials and tribulations, I find very difficult to trust you. I find very difficult to see the way out of my situation. And I can understand that I need the power of God to give me faith. So saints, every time you lack faith, God will continue to place you in difficult situations. You hear what I'm saying, saints? Every time you see trials and, and, and tribulation and persecution, left, right, and center is because God has identified that you need faith. Come on now, somebody. God is allowing those trials, that those tribulations, so that you can build faith, confidence in him, so that you will know that he's a God of promise. He's a God of covenant. That whatever it is that, he is allowing you to go through. It is not to harm you. It is not to destroy you. No, it is to build a new faith and character and integrity and trust in him and perseverance. All right, saints. So whatever the case may be here with you in relation to your level of faith, your level of trust in God. There is always something new we can all learn from the word of God. No one is too wise that that the word cannot prune you. The word cannot usher you forward to God. The word of God will always do something in the life of a believer. No matter how much knowledge you have of the word of God. There is always something that you do, don't know. There is, there is always a certain level of revelation that you have not gone further with the Holy Spirit. And by you being here, you will, go, you will embark on that journey in Jesus' name. So precious saints, let us consecrate this live stream unto the Lord. As I am praying, I advise you to go and get yourself some water, coffee, tea, whatever it is, because hmm, we are going to be here for some time. All right, saints, get yourselves comfortable. Sister Tanya, my sister, welcome. Are you okay? Let us pray to consecrate this live stream unto the Lord. Abba Father, King of glory, everlasting God, O ye rock of ages. We thank you for, for your presence. Of God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Thank you, Father Lord, for choosing us to know the truth that sets us free. Thank you for choosing us, Father Lord, to establish a covenant with us. Thank you, Father Lord, for revealing yourself to us through your Son, Yeshua. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for the gift of righteousness. And thank you for the gift of faith. Because without faith, we cannot please you. Without faith, we cannot believe that you exist. Without faith, we cannot believe in the mystery of salvation. Without faith, we cannot possess our possession, which is eternal life. So thank you, Father Lord, because we know that we know that we know that you are real, that you are powerful, that you are mighty. Father Lord, there is none like you, O Lord. And what you have done for us, Lord God, is so much that even a million years wouldn't be enough to praise you for your faithfulness, for your love. Father, Lord, for the gift of salvation given to us freely on that cross of Calvary, Lord. As we honor you. As we worship you. 
As we give you grace and glory, Father Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding. We thank you, Father Lord, because we are here, Father Lord, not because we are stronger than others, wiser than others, but we are here because of your mercies, Lord God. We are here because of your, of your mercies, because, Father Lord, you have given us a second chance. Hallelujah. Father Lord, thank you for sustaining us throughout the night. Father Lord, keeping the spirit of death away from us, keeping criminals away from our dwelling, keeping us safe from harm, escorting us in peace to and fro, Father Lord, from all our errands to our jobs, the children to school. Thank you, Abaya. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for encamping angels around us to deliver us from all evil. Lord, I am grateful for the lives of my brothers and sisters here today, Lord God. And as we surrender our hearts, our souls, our spirits, as we surrender everything that we are, everything that we have, including our children, into your holy hands, we ask you, arise, King of glory. Oh, awesome Father. Wonderful Counselor. And Father Lord, manifest your presence on this live stream today. Find expression in our midst, Lord God. Reveal yourself to us the way you have never yet, Father Lord, revealed. Because, Father Lord, some of us, our faith is not enough, Lord God. But, Lord God, I pray that today each one of us will have a divine encounter with you like we have never experienced before. That, Father Lord, you will bestow upon us such an anointing, Lord God, that we will be able to connect with you like we have never connected before. Father Lord, I pray, manifest your presence, manifest your power, manifest your love, manifest your mercy, manifest your deliverance. But moreover, Lord God, manifest in us, Father Lord, the gift of salvation, Lord God. Father Lord, as we approach your throne of glory and power and mercy, we adore you and we revere you and we ask you to forgive us, to be merciful unto us up to 50 generations before us, Lord God. Forgive us for our sin of idolatry, sins, Father Lord, of witchcraft, sins, Father Lord, of immorality, of wickedness, Lord God. Have mercy, God, in Jesus' mighty name. Cleanse our hearts, our souls, and our spirits from all unrighteousness with the precious blood of your son, Yeshua. Father Lord, we dedicate this live stream into your hands. We pray take possession of the live stream. Make this live stream holy ground. Father Lord, begin to summon from the four corners of the world all those who need, Father Lord, today, salvation. That is the most important gift that a man can receive from you. It is the gift of salvation. So, Father, Lord, call those who you want to reveal yourself to them. Manifest your power. Manifest your anointing. Manifest your peace that surpasses all understanding. Manifest your greatness. Break yokes. Set the captives free, almighty God, and begin to bind, Father Lord, principalities, rulers of darkness, wicked and demonic spirits that have been assigned by the enemy, Father Lord, to cause confusion in our midst, to steal, kill, destroy, and divert souls from your kingdom, and to cause a all manner of confusion, Father Lord, on this live stream. And cast them all onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever. Never to have power, control, and authority over us and the live stream. Father Lord, we rebuke every destruction of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. And if there is any agent of darkness here, Father Lord, seeking to cause confusion, send arrows, destabilize, and scatter us. Father Lord, I pray that today you will also bind them with the everlasting chains of the Holy Ghost fire and render them completely powerless. That their knees will bow and their tongues will confess that Jesus Christ is lord hallelujah almighty god as we are gathered here look after our children at school i place them under the blood of jesus as they are in school i pray that you will guide them and protect them i envelope each one of us summoned here with the blood of jesus i drench and saturate the live stream and our very environment with the precious blood of our lord jesus i call upon the power of the holy ghost to guide us, to give us knowledge and understanding of the word. And I pray, reveal yourself to us, manifest your power, manifest your anointing that breaks yokes, Lord God. And you, Father, that reveals all things, because it is written, nothing will be hidden to you. 
reveal yourself to us and everything else that needs to come to the light of the gospel so that repentance can take place. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and we are pray, Father Lord, as well, anoint my lips with the fire of the Holy Ghost and use me as a trumpet to sound the alarm that you are coming back again, Lord Jesus, to judge the living and the dead. And we ought to be prepared to see you, Father Lord, on that fateful day. Oh, Father Lord, as I pray, Father Lord, take control. I no longer will be speaking, but you will be speaking through my lips, through my mouth. I'm just a vessel, Lord God, ready to be used by you, Lord God. So thank you, Jesus. Because I'm a wretched sinner, yet you found it that you could use a wretched sinner like me. And I am grateful, Lord God. Now, we all appreciate you and we love you. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, amen, amen, and amen. Precious saints, I want to rebuke every cough in Jesus' name. You know, the devil is trying because all throughout the day I've been on the phone talking to different, you know, talk to my husband. I spoke to him and then I spoke to Sister Lori and I, I was talking all day. Nothing has happened. As soon as I log in, I'm coughing. You see? But I rebuke that in Jesus' name. We will gather here without any cough. Precious saints, let us go to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 11 from verse 13 to 25. Before I go further, I need to tell some of you here that when the word of God is being taught to you, it is a very sacred moment. So please do not write any scriptures that are not connected to the, to the ministration. Okay? There is nothing wrong in you having scriptures that you would like to share it with us. Leave it to the end and say, I would like to share this scripture with the saints. And, 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 and then, then you are free to do so because it's not a dictatorship here. It's just that we just want simple order. You want to complain. You want to vent. The live stream is not a platform for venting and complaining. Number one, you are exposing yourself. Quietly inbox me with your problem, okay? Because you don't know who comes past this live stream and you could be an agent of darkness and you see your problem there and they will intensify by sending an arrow because you are presenting your case to men and not to God. Okay? You want to talk about something, inbox me. You're not happy about something and you want to complain about somebody, inbox me. If you have been... Corrected by a moderator because you are violating the rules of the live stream. Such as when, when is the prophetic hour. You are judging those who are being prophesied. You deterring them from identifying. And there is a sister here that you did just that. When someone was being called forth with the, on the, the, during the prophetic hour and you began to judge them. Wow, ee, how can a person be like this and, and like that? You are judging them. And then when the moderator tells you, don't, don't do it, it is wrong. You are deterring the person from identifying and you are insulting the moderator. The moderator is here chosen by God. The moderators are here by divine appointment. Okay. And you can't do that. Don't think that the moderators are nobodies. This is, this is just like a church. It's just that it's online. Would you go and insult the Asha if the Asha says to you, look, you can't do this, you can't do that because these are the rules of the congregation. Would you go there and, tell, and insult the Asha? You wouldn't. So don't do here because you think that it's online. You can abuse the moderators, insult the moderators and don't listen. And then when you are blocked, you are contacting me, complaining. You abuse the moderators. Do you think I'm going to join you to abuse them as well? I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry, saints, but these things need to be said. All right? Hallelujah. Let us go further. Hebrews 11 from verse 13 to 25, saints. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were for foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. 
If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his only, his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And so, in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from dead. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regards to the future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on top on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child. And they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. Come on now, somebody. This is a powerful scripture. I want to say this to you for you to believe, even to believe in God. For you to even believe in God, you need faith. Okay? For you to even believe in God, you need faith. Without faith, you cannot. You cannot. See God. Feel God. Understand God. And obey God. Or fear God. Without faith it is impossible for you to understand who God is. Even the mystery of salvation. You need faith. How many people have no faith? They are called atheists. They are atheists. A -a atheists. They don't believe in God. They don't believe that there is a God. They believe that religion. Our religion, believing in Christ and the mystery of salvation is all fabrication from the human mind. How many people? But you that you believe that there is a God, that means that there is faith. Even if it's 1% or 2%, because you are believing that there is a God. You are believing that he, he, he came to set the captives free. He lived on this earth. He died on the cross of Calvary. He shed his blood for, for the forgiveness of your sin. That takes faith. Come on now. And then look at another step of, another step of faith. Not, you don't stop there. Then you begin to obey all God's commandments because you have faith that he is real. Come on now. You see, when I hear people saying, I believe in God, I'm a very spiritual person, but they do everything against God. That means you lack faith. Because if what you believed was real, and you really had an encounter with God, you wouldn't do the things that you are doing. We're going to go deeper. The Bible tells us that when you are a man or a woman of faith, you believe that you are here on this land of the living. Transitionally. You are here passing by. You have a, a, a destination that you go. And you know moreover that even if the things that you are praying and asking God to do for you, even if they don't happen, there is a heaven that is waiting to accommodate you. There is a heavenly address waiting for you. God has gone to prepare a place for you. Come on now, somebody. Come on now, somebody. You know that, Lord, even if that, what I'm asking you doesn't happen on this plane, 
on this land of the living. I know that where I'm going is far much higher, far much bigger, far much prosperous than this land. I will live in righteousness. I will not have any pain. I will not die again. You know. That's why you are not phased by whatever it is that the enemy is doing in this land of the living. You say, Lord, I know I won't be in here for too long. You will transition me to your presence. So whatever it is that the enemy is doing, he knows that he has but a short time. There is faith. Because some people don't have that level of faith. They go to church more than some of you here. Have you seen those people that go to Bible studies? They go to all the programs that they have in their church, but they don't change their ways. They live like the pagans, eat like the pagans, dress like the pagans, act like the pagans. They just go to church because it's a club to associate, to mingle, because they are lonely, because they, they like to be surrounded by friends. How many people? But they are not doing anything that indicates that these people are set apart. They are very much a part of the world. Church is, just, do you know that some people have a culture of church? Do you know that? Some people, because their parents were churchgoers, grandparents were churchgoers, they have that habit to go to church and be engaged in church activities. But their lives don't reflect faith in Christ. Because faith in Christ is, is not just lip service. It needs to be accompanied, accompanied by works. People don't, listen. People don't have to look at you and try to guess. Mm, are these believers? Because they always go to their church. But mm, I don't think they are believers. Because when they live in the church, they play in all sorts of music in their car. They are smoking outside of the church. They, 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 they are drinking. They are in the clubs just like us. Eh, are these people Christians or are these people non-Christians? Well, what are they? People are confused about you. They don't know where you stand with God. And they are unbelievers. They are not even church people. And let me tell you something. Those of you believers in Christ Jesus. When God begins to test you. Instead of you zip it. And begin to glorify God in that test. You begin to blaspheme. God does not love me. God must hate me. God is busy be blessing everybody else, but he never blesses me. How many times did I ask God to give me the house and he didn't do it? How many times I asked for promotion and he didn't do it? How many times I asked for God to fix my marriage and he didn't do it? God is not concerned about my situation. God does not care about what I go through. You see, you, you when you begin to see your mouth running like that, you lack faith. Your faith, your confidence in God is zero. Because you don't believe that God can test you. I'm here to ask if God tested Abraham. Will he not test you? Are we better than father Abraham? Look what the Bible says in verse 17. By faith Abraham when God tested him offered Isaac as sacrifice. Some of you God has not even asked you for your Isaac. Has asked you for your vice. For you to quit smoking. Quit fornicating. Quit lying. Quit cheating. Quit stepping out, shacking up, quit committing adultery, quit that program of occult that you have in your house, quit the film watching, quit, quit, quit the club going. He didn't even ask you for your Isaac because he knows your faith is so depleted that if I was to ask you for your Isaac, you drop dead even if you will have heart attack. He's just asking you to lay down the vice and the idols that you cannot do. Come on now, somebody. Even at that, it's like him. You are struggling. God has said to you, I have a problem with the way you are dressed. Why is your breast out? Why are you sagging your trousers? Why are you doing all these things? And you have a problem because you are ignoring God. You don't want the counsel of God. You don't want to hear God. But you want things to change. But when God is testing you, because God will test you, you know. It's like people who are in love. Observe people who are in love. 
they are in love and it's a beautiful love story and then they go on social media he goes down on his knees and proposes and buys a nice diamond ring oh, la, 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 la. all that accolade and is a plaster of social media taking pictures now the engagement party they dressed and, da, 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 da. and whatever they profess they love and they profess this and they are kissing and all that and then finally they get married and it's a big function and everything and guess what that love will be put to test once those two young birds get married and they begin to cohabitate share the same house have to get up in the morning and see one another without brushing their teeth and seeing 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 the young beautiful lady without the lace wig or see the lace wig with the glue coming out and and then now they live in the toilet and he's smelling and now the husband is coming from the gym and it's because remember all it was all and good and flowery because each one was using the toilet at mama's house without no advertisement and everything thing and the pictures online and when they facetime she had her wig on and he was hey hmm. and she was hey hmm. but now that you are in the same house those vows are gonna be tested come on everything in this life comes to testing don't worry even what you lied on your cv to your ceo for you to get the job now that they are testing you they are squeezing you like a lemon to see what kind of juice you have you hey now the french is not coming out of your mouth now the english is failing you hey hmm. now the grammar has left you you are all alone on that computer you are all alone and then you are now saying jesus what did i do with my life i am a liar and a cheater and a deceiver and i'm paying for it come on now everything is gonna come to a test you that like to lie on social media that you have this car and Hey, you take pictures on that BMW that is your uncle that is 60 and he has worked for and saved for retirement. And you now take the car for a spin because the uncle has told you that, okay, you can take the car. And as long as you bring it back, you are taking pictures, posting yourself and social media. And, da, 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 da. and then when you are caught in the supermarket with that, your little, little Ford Sierra that your mother doesn't want anymore, you are feeling some type of way because everything that you do will be tested. The test will come. Don't worry. Oh, yes. You are editing your pictures, filtering them. Hmm? You are yellow, but in your pictures, we are seeing you tanned and nice because you put a filter. Oh, yes. Don't worry. I will address everything. And you the, the, the put the lighter fi filter when you are chocolatey. We all deceiving ourselves. The chocolatey people want to be light skin and the light skin people won't be chocolatey. And then when that person that you've been lying and sending your, 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 your selfie, they catch you at the gym. And they said, this, this, I thought this was a chocolate sister. This is not a chocolate sister. This is not a brown sister. This, this, she is a liar. And the yellow sister that said was chocolate. You are not chocolate. We are all deceiving. Our, everything will be put to the test. But some of you here, God is not even asking you for your Isaac. He has not come to that stage yet. You know why God asked Abraham for, an, for, an, for his Isaac? Because God had already tested Abraham on every level. So that was the last level of testing. Some of you, God is just testing you the way you speak. You swear too much. You talk like a sailor. You swear like a sailor. God has told you, look, you're going to have to stop this kind of language. It is not right. Some of you, God has just told you, look, quit the smoking, quit the fornication. Stop lying. I don't know what God has told you to do. And he's testing your faith little by little, but you can't even, you see how you go, you, you, your children play games. I don't understand much of game sense. Even when I was young, I wasn't much into games. But I understand a little bit. Games have levels, right? You can pass level zero, which is the easiest. Anyone that has begun to play a game, the first e level is easy. You're not even that level. It's, a, it's hard. How will you even be asked for your Isaac? You won't. God, is, God knows. 
The Bible says who he who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his own his one and only son even though God had said to him it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Let me let me just address this. Some of you God promised you something. I don't know what it is. And he made a promise to you that you're going to serve him. That he's going to use you to bless your family. It is through you that your children will have a better life. I don't know what promises God made to you. But when God begins to touch that, that blessing that he gave you. Some of you, God promised you a house and he fulfilled this part of the promise he gave, gave you the house. Some of you, you ask for a job. God kept this part of the bargain and he blessed you with the job. He blessed you with the marriage. He blessed you with whatever it is. But now God is just testing you. When you know when God is testing you, you will touch that that he blessed you with. But some of you, you, are not, you don't have faith in your heart. Because when God begins to touch that that he blessed you with. You begin to blaspheme. How can God promise me something and take it from me? How can thou God that God you are you said you are faithful? This is your kind of prayer. But look at Abraham, the father of faith. He knew how to be tested. He knew that he was going through a process of testing. Because when God touched I told him to bring Isaac to be sacrificed. Abraham did not question God. He never said, God, how can you take something you promised to me? How can you take something that you gave to me? How can you take something that gave me so much joy to take it away from me, Lord? Why, why are you doing this? It's too painful. He never asked that. How many of you now that God is testing you in that job? Lord, how can you allow me to be put to shame in this job that you gave me? How can you allow me to be put to shame in my finances? How can you allow this, this that you blessed me with? Now you are touching it. Now you are testing me with it. But why are you doing it, God? Did you not promise me? Did you not say that you're going to be faithful? How many of you are in this situation? But look at Father Abraham, verse 19. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from dead, from death. You that are being tested here. There is a testing on your life. You receive a letter. You're about to take your house. Receive a letter. You are about to lose your employment. You receive a letter with a certain diagnosis. I'm challenging you to move by faith today. Do it like Father Abraham. Know that if God is testing you, it is not to destroy you. It's not to render you powerless. It's not to put you to shame. He's testing you because he wants to see what's in your heart. He wants to see what, what kind of faith do you possess. So you need to begin to change your prayers. Lord, I know this is a testing phase. I know that my position in that company is shaky, but I know that you can even raise the dead. So, Father, the door that you open, no man can close. So, whatever the outcome is, Lord, I'm blessed with or without a job. Father, Lord, so whatever the outcome is with this sickness is either you heal me or you bring me to your presence. I'm not worried, Lord, with this, my house, that they are I can't afford it anymore. Is either you will supernaturally provide the miracle for me to 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 to, to to be able to pay and keep my house or you will give me a better house as something you are up to lord is either to promote me or is either to give me something better i know that this too shall pass come on now <clears throat> that is the faith that god wants to see in you and in me come on now it was necessary that abraham was tested so that he could become what the father of faith isn't that Abraham is the father of faith? Come on now. Abraham was tested on every angle and he passed each of the tests. Come on now. Look, 
By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau, and Esau in regard to their future. For you to pray over your children, you have to have faith that 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 you have prayed will come to pass in Jesus' name. Look at the Bible. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff. A man that is dying, but is blessing his children and is worshipping God. Can you imagine how many people can do that today? Very few. Let's go further. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. So by faith, Joseph could see the future. He could prophesy. It is by faith that you prophesy. It is by faith that you speak into the future and it happens. Come on now. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. The king's edict was every child below two. <laughs> but this family, this couple had faith. They knew who is Pharaoh before our God. You see? God does not choose any, any person to be your parents. You know that? Some of you that you are here, although your parents are not saved, but they have a certain character, a certain trait. And God chose them to be vessels because he was about to bring you and you needed to be born from that family. Oh, yes. God knows who is fit to be your parents. That is why I never judge your parents because you had to come from them. Look at the faith of Moses' parents. Moses' parents are in the Bible, you know, mentioned as champions of faith. If they didn't have faith, they would have, they would have handed over that child to be by the by the by the Egyptians because that was the edict of the Pharaoh there every child below two must go male child but because they knew that the God they served had a plan a purpose for Je for Moses they were already moving in the prophetic come on now. some of you here that are listening today you have siblings but you always felt that you were different than your siblings and your parents always commissioned you more responsibility than even some of your older siblings. There, is, there was always something about you that your mother and your father, they knew they could trust you with money. They could trust you with the house keys. They could trust you with the baby in the house. They could even trust you, you going groceries and bringing change and the receipt. But they didn't trust your siblings. And now, oh, but my mom, she always gives me so much responsibility because they know who is who in that household, who is to be trusted and who is not to be trusted. Same thing with God. When he, look at, look, <laughs> when he looks at us from heaven, he knows this one with money, don't trust him. You will squander it. That one with the congregation, don't, don't trust him. He's a gossiper. He will destroy the church. That one, don't even trust him with any counseling. He's wicked. That one is too, he's got the spirit of anger. Don't trust him with anyone. God knows each one of us. He knows, he knows, he knows. And let me tell you something. If God is testing you, it's because he trusts you that you pass the test. Come on now. Remember Job. God did not choose any, any man to test any, any man. He chose the finest. He chose the best, best he had to be tested. And it happened to be Job. Job was a candidate to be tested. Some of you, you know why you're not tested. Everything is good in your life. <laughs> because God has, there's nothing good God needs and wants from you. Your life is average. But a man and a woman that have, 
that God has chosen to walk with him will be tested every day, even little things. So if you are being tested, it's because there is greatness in you. If you are being tested, it's because God wants to reveal that you are strong. You know, I never, listen. When I was in school, as a young little girl, I was bullied. Because I was always the shortest one in class. I was always the, the person that was tiny. And I was picked, picked on because I was, you know, I was short. And when I was short, not when I was a child, I had a lot of freckles. And those days of freckles is not like now. The freckles are pretty. They, are, they were not pretty back in my days. And I was mocked. All sorts of things. Children are cruel, right? But it's, the more people began to bully me and do these things, I realized that, look, I'm not that weak as I, I used. Now I, I, I defend myself. I used to defend, de defend myself. And I used to use my mouth to defend myself and say some things to them as well. You see? So I understood, no, I'm not, I'm not as weak as these people portray me. Because when I respond to them and I defend myself, they're quiet. They're not saying anything. So some of you, you are being tested because God wants to realize that you are stronger than you, what you think. You are more intelligent than what you've been told. You are more wiser than what you perceive. There is greatness in you. God is not going to test somebody that has nothing. Testing is what? It means that there is something in you that needs to come out. <clears throat> come on now. You that you've been in school all your lives. All of us been to school. There are those people in class that don't say much. The teachers asking questions. They, they rarely put their hands up to but there are those woo, 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 all the time. But when the test comes or the exam comes, they all fail. And that person quiet that doesn't say a word passes the exams with flying colors. Even the teachers when with the results of the test, they are shocked. Some teachers get shocked because they had an idea that, oh, the intelligence one are those ones. But when the test comes, if no. This one is the one with the gift. That one is the one. You know, and then he begins to know his class and who is who. Because looks are very deceive, deceive, deceiving. I, uh, there are some children that are very naughty at school and chat too much in class. They are always talking. And the teacher stops the class. Oh, what was I saying? I bet you don't know. And that child, because he's a genius, will say, oh, no, it's miss. You are talking. Da, 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 da. And the teacher is, is, is ashamed because she thought that this one is one of a troublemaker. But when he begins to, that child begins to tell her what she, she was saying or he was saying, they, they're shocked. Because why? The child is a genius. Although he's chatting, but he's still paying because there are people like that. They mess about, but when it comes to, to the test, they pass it. Have you, see, have you noticed people like that? They play with you. They're not studying. You don't see them reading any books. But when they go for the test, they pass the test. And you, that you've been reading and you fail. Because uh, some people are just gifted. Some people are just great. But if they don't go through the test, the teacher's not going to know. The teacher's gonna, just going to brand them as troublemakers, brand them as, as mischievous. But it's when the testing comes that the teacher understands, hey, this one giving me trouble is so intelligent. That one that chats so much is so brilliant. You see, testing will bring the character. Who is who? You see that? For instance, I'm going to give my example, me and my brother. I have a younger brother. And I used to study all night and stay and read because me, I'm, my, my learning is slow. I'm not like other people that can learn and absorb. Before. Me, I take my time. I'm not that brilliant in terms of being able to absorb a lot of things because I'm not a parrot. That business of being a parrot, I'm out of it. You know, I, I, when I read something, I cannot just memorize it. I have to understand what, what is the reason. 
why this person is saying this, this, this. And until I can understand it, I will not be able to, 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 to understand and, and explain to you and write it down. Because we are all different. But I have a younger brother that as soon as he reads a book or a manual, he's memorized it. You give him any number, memorize phone numbers, he knows them by heart. But I'm not like that. I don't have that gift. And I used to be upset with why is this, my brother doesn't study. He reads, he's reading three, four times and he goes for that exam and, 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 and he, he, he's, he's done it. Me, I'm struggling to even memorize times tables, even until today. If you, if you ask me how much is seven times, I'm, I will, uh, uh, I have to get, you know how I do times table sense. I have to go and write down the times table and then I, I'll do it that way. But if you ask me just any times table like that, I can't tell you. Some of them I can remember, some of them I can't. Do you understand? So we all different. We all have different capacities. We all have different mindsets. We all have different talents. We all have different gifts. And the test is just a test. Is to know how much information were you able to absorb in, in, in three months. That's why some majority of people that are very brilliant, they, they, they bank off, they, 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 they quit. They drop off school because they, 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 it's very, it, it's very it, difficult for them to memorize, memorize things and they don't like to be locked, confined in a classroom. They, they, they can't learn like that. And there are countries like Sweden, for example, that a child, they don't start school until age eight. From, from age four to eight, they play, they sing, they jump, they do all different things. It's only from the age of eight they, can, they, they begin to learn. A, B, C, D, whatever. And they produce the most intelligent people and efficient people in the world. And they don't have long hours of school like other countries. They are there or half day, half morning or half afternoon and they go home. And they are intelligent. Look at the things that create technology. They create everything. Even Elon Musk. Elon Musk did not go to school that much. He was a, he was a man that was creative with his mind. He went out and about creating things. He had to understand the purpose of things. He studied the things on his own. So don't the, the, the testing is just they want to know how much information you have gathered. But the testing of God is not different. You have read the Bible. You know the scriptures now. You know the promises of God. You know what God requires from you. You have confessed God with your mouth. You confess the scripture. Then now God wants to see, hey, that scripture that you receive, I'm coming to test you now. How much fruit? Is he producing any fruit? You receive the scripture, yes, but is he producing fruit in your life? He's coming to check. Did not Jesus go to the fig tree? To check if the fig tree had some fig. You know why Jesus got so upset and cursed the fig tree? It is not because the fig tree didn't have figs for him to eat. It is the audacity of that fig tree looking like it had fruits. Looking so luscious. Deceiving. And make him waste his time and walk to the fig tree to look. And make him look for the fruits. Hey, hey. But this, what is with this fig tree? How can he not have any fruit and it's so beautiful and luscious? What a deceiving tree. Some of us, we are like that. We have an appearance. We look holy. We look like we have fruits of righteousness. But at home, watching corn, immorality. At home, insulting husband, insulting the wife, abusive to the children, lying, deceiving, all sorts of things. You see? Is the audacity. You look like something, but that you're not. Like those people who go on social media and pretend to be something that they're not. They call them catfish, isn't it? One woman that has not even one, one tooth in her mouth is wearing dentures, buys lace wig and this, and takes pictures and put filters on, and this, this, and that, and this, this, and that, and posts on dating sites. 
arrange the dating. And then when she goes there, the, 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 the man is thinking, but does this woman have the wrong address? Is this the person? It is happening. Go on social media, you will see these people being sent, chased by, by the person because they catfished them. They were catfished. Some of us, we are cut fish of the faith. Scriptures, we can, we can memorize all scriptures. We can proclaim every scripture, but we don't live it. We don't live it. Come on now. I love, I love my brothers and sisters. But as soon as your brother and sister has left your presence, you're gossiping. Mm, sister so-and-so is gain weight. Sister so-and-so looks like she's suffering. She lost weight. Brother so-and-so, mm -hmm. have you seen how brother so-and-so, I think he's now lost money because his car is gone. Gossiping. But you, you, you are church go. You look like somebody that is loving and kind and caring. You see? These things happen. And sometimes your faith will be tested on another level. Where God is going to place you in certain environments, comfortable, of luxury, of opulence. That people will look at you and want to associate with you. People will begin to see value in you. People will begin to adopt you, want to be your friend. And you will be in environments that are potentially of gain to you. And God will test you. Whether you're going to fall for the lifestyle or if you're going to forsake the lifestyle for the love of God. Because although the environment is opulent, they, are com they, they have vices, they are smoking, they are drinking. Although the environment is, it, 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 it can be beneficial to you because of good connections. Those, peop those good connections are people that are against God. People who do things that are illegal. People who do things that are against the Lord. They are fornicators. They are adulterers. I don't know. But let me take you to verse 24. Verse 24 says, by faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. How many of you have rich friends? Some of you here do. Friends that have yachts. What you Americans call yachts. They have houses on the beach, by the beach. You have friends that are bankers, friends that are well off and they love you. Come on now. But every time you go to visit them, they are smoking those Cuban cigars. They have a girlfriend there and is not their wife. Committing adultery. They use vulgar language. They don't mind compromising their, their morals for something. You see, Moses could have done just that, compromise. Because of what? What he could gain having rich, having a rich royal family. With prestige, status, royalty for that matter. But he said no. He said no. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God. Sometimes you're going to have to say, Lord, I would rather lose than to be among the rich that are cruel and wicked than to be among those who can be of help to me, but they are your enemies. You're going to have to be situation. You're going to be in situations when you're going to have to, you're going to be weighed on a scale. <clears throat> and you're going to have to decide whether to run with God alone or to run with the, with the movers and shakers on your way to hell. You're going to have to make a decision. Some of you that you are in business, you are a businesswoman, you, you are a businessman. There is going to come a time when you're going to have a business proposal that 
it could be of benefit to you, great benefit, financial benefit to you. But in order for you to reap that financial benefit, you're going to have to forsake the laws of God. You're going to have to turn a blind eye to the commandments of God. And you're going to have a tough decision. Make that money or keep the commandments. Because that takes faith. That takes faith. Some of us will be tested when things are good. When you are getting blessed. When people are elevating you. People are ushering you forward. People are adding value to you. And then you're going to come to a, <laughs> a point where you hit a wall. A brick wall. The commandments on the right side or the things of this world on the left side. You choose. What, what will you do? Because I'm telling you, it's easy, to, it's easy to say we love God when we have not been in that situation where, hey, <clears throat> is either God or nothing. Is either God or the things, because that takes faith. For you to say no to any indecent proposal, it takes faith. Because people say you are crazy. How are you just going to turn this business deal for a God you have not seen? For a God that you don't even know whether exists or not? People are going to say this, this woman is mad. This man is crazy. People are going to say these people have gone lost their mind. How can you lose this business proposal like that? Something that could change your life and the lives of your children and the next generation to come. But because you know that you are here as a pilgrim passing through. That you have an eternal destination to go. You will say, I don't care about how much money it is. If I have to deny my God and become a pagan. Mm -mm -mm. I don't want it. They can keep it. Come on now. Because when we hear about faith, we think that faith is, is just an exercise of belief that we do in order to get something. But it's also the, the opposite. Is you having, you believing that God is real. He's a faithful reward of those who diligently seek him. And that he has a heaven and he has a hell. You choose. Come on now. How many of us here when we were in the world, we had a lot of friends. The minute we, we, we send a text message. Oh, can, you, can I borrow? Oh, don't even bother to borrow. I'll give you. I dash you. As we say. Back home. Dash me. You call a friend. You say, hey, I'm in need. In my house, I have not paid the, the bill. And they will transfer you something. And then by the time you receive that money. Hey, when do I have to pay? It's a dash. It's dash. I'm dashing you. I'm dashing you. They don't even want you to pay back. But the day you accepted Christ. Them friends that used to dash you this. Dash you there. Dash you that. Don't dash you nothing anymore. They thinking, look at this lunatic. We are here making money. And do, do, they, they send God, 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 God every day. Sin, 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 sin. Eh? These people are crazy. And then they begin even to preach. You know, the wicked can preach. Eh, the Bible says that each man has to help himself. And these people, God is blessing them and giving them opportunity. And they don't want to be blessed. They're crazy people. Well, well, God is blessing with this illegal money. Because it's God that connected me to these people. The devil, the devil preaches as well his own gospel. So faith is not just that arm that you need in the spirit to go and get you something from God. It's when you are presented with tests. Is your faith strong enough to turn, up, turn off a $1 million deal? Come on now. Not so long ago we had that a scandal of pota poti. Girls that were going to a certain country to be defecated in their mouths, urinated in their mouths, and all sorts of ungodly things. But because they were offered one, two, three million dollars, they did it. 
Do you understand? Because they were offered one, two, three million dollars. They put all their morals, all their faith in God, all their humanity aside. Because the three million dollars was more important than their dignity, their faith in God, their humanity. Come on now. To the point that they were allowed to be defiled by dogs and camels. Donkeys. Horses. But that is the extreme. But how many of, how, how many of you, you work somewhere and somebody has said, hey, you know, like you are in this treasury department, you know, we can make money, you know. We can make money here. If I teach you, hey, how to write some documents down and mm, we will make money here. I just need you to, you know, and we will share it. 5K for you, 5K for me. And you that you are in all sorts of debts. Struggling to pay your bills. You're going to go home and have a long night. Take this money illegally. Or continue to struggle with my debts, but still go to heaven. Still have a relationship with Christ. Still go. Still go to bed in peace and sleep in peace and wake up in peace. Hey. <laughs> what and what? That's faith. Me, I would rather struggle than to deceive, than, than to, to, to betray my God. Faith. Because you know, God is not gonna, has not brought you this far to leave you. Because you know, God does not abandon his children. He will not allow the righteous to be forsaken and say, God, even if it takes 10 years for you to give me that house, Lord, I'm willing to wait, but I will not sell my soul to the enemy. That is faith. Let us go again, saints. I'm taking you to the book of, book of Romans. Chapter 10, verse 17. Book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Some of you that are here today, I'm sorry to break it down to you. The reason why your faith is so tiny is minimum. It is because... Your level of the level of knowledge about the word of God is extremely limited. You don't have the habit of sitting down and have a feast with the word of God. Have a banquet with the word of God. Have you ever had those big fishes that they have so many bones, but the fish is so nice and delicious that you need to desiccate to make sure you, the fish, that, that, that when you're eating, you don't swallow any bones. Then you have your potatoes and you have your, your vegetables on the side or a salad. And you are just having that meal slowly but surely. And by the time you finish that meal, you are satisfied, you are full and you you reinvigorated. It is the same with the word of God. Some of you are not in a habit of sitting down with the word. Do you know sitting down with the word and reading the word? It means sitting down. To be fed by God. To taste the word of God. To taste God and know that he's good. Swallow it. Let it go down to your spirit, to your heart, and do the changing that it needs to be done. Come on now. Some of you don't know that. 
So what I want to say to you saints, you have to understand that without hearing the word of God, meditating upon the word of God daily, your faith will be zero. Don't wait for your pastor to open the Bible for you. Don't wait for the live stream to come and receive divine knowledge from God. Take responsibility for your own walk with Christ. You be diligent. You take the, the, the initiative. I want to be fed by God today. I want to learn how to read and interpret it. I want to be able to see, to, to see God through the scripture. And you will notice that your life will never be the same again. There are very, there are plenty of studies conducted by scientists where they had two groups of people. The people who read the Bible every day and the people who don't. How the levels of, how the levels of depression are so high on those who do not read the Bible. As a, as a matter of fact, those people who read the Bible, right? For the first time. First day, nothing happens. Second day, nothing help, happens. On the third day, something begins to change in their brain. That part that activates good mood. There is a name for it. And then on the fourth day, worry, anxiety, decreases from 100%, yes, endorphins. Thank you very much. It was established that the people who read the Bible daily, they almost had no anxiety, no depression. They were optimistic, positive. They live a more fulfilled life. In comparison to the people who do not read the Bible. So it does something to you. So imagine that if a whole year you've been reading and studying and you have notes and you come to the live stream and you meditate, your life will never be the same again. What used to afflict you in 2023 will not afflict you in 2024. You are not phased when the bill is due. You are not phased when the mortgage is due because you know God is going to come through for you. If he came through for Moses, will he not come through for you? If he came through for our father Abraham, will we not come through for you? You know, you read the Bible, you know how the story ends. It's always victory for us. We never lose. We always win. So when the husband begins to panic, hey, 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 hey calm down, be peace. Know that he's God. He's in charge. We will pay it. So what is, it, it's been, an, uh, 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 we've never failed all these months. So because we, we two days, you, you think God is not going to come for us. And you will notice the minute you begin to make such declarations, all of a sudden something went into your account. You paid the bill. Graduating in faith. Don't you graduate in high school and then you have to go to college and graduate? It is because you, they've tested you left, right and center. They know you're mature, you're well, you can go forward. Isn't it? When we begin to graduate from, from element, element, elementary school, they soon put that hat on you, send you. Go, go high school now. You're not fit for here. You're too big. High school. Come on, leave, leave, leave. Others need to come. Come out. Same thing with the things of God. You are not, no, 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 you are not on elementary now. You're high school. And God looks at you. Hey, brother, so-and-so is not high school anymore. He's, he, he, he's college. He's college level now. Oh, oh, oh sister son, so she's not college anymore. No, no, no. Angels will come, you know. Uh, 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 uh. This, this sister son, so is not college anymore. She's now a professor. Fit to teach now. Get her ready. Get her gowned. Get her garment. Graduated. Send her. She's needed so and so. Whatever. That is how in the kingdom. Sorry, saints. Let me open the door.
these Amazon people are a problem in my life. Don't worry. Guy is pressing the bell like it's the judgment day. Saints, we ought to graduate in our faith with God. How can you be in the faith? Because we call it being in the faith. Have you ever heard of, ever heard of that ter term? I've been in faith for 20 years. But your level of maturity in the faith is, is elementary. Is high school. It's not even college. Not to talk about you now being a professor. To be able to teach. Forget it. Hmm? And that level of faith can only come by hearing the word of God. There is no shortcuts for the things of God. We will not going to take shortcuts. It's not going to happen. You are going to have to do the hard work. You see me? Let me tell you. Look. These are my notes. Every day I'm taking notes. Don't look at my notes that are ugly and everything. Don't look at the notes. But every day, notes. Study the word of God. Different books to help me. Because you cannot do this by... I have books. You see, my phone is, is stashed. They have got one, two, three, four, five, six books stashed here. And my phone is on top. Because you're going to have to study. You're going to have to study because if you don't study, how will you grow in faith? Hmm? The ungodly people are confronting you no know, more scriptures than you. They're confronting you. Uh, uh, let me go on Google and eh, 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 eh. can't defend your faith. Somebody's telling you something outlandish that is not written in the Bible and is confronting you. You know because <laughs> you still remember Sunday morning school, right? In this what this person is saying is a lie. But you cannot defend God because you don't know the word. Do you know you are to be the defender of the faith? When somebody's lying, they say, oh, the God of Israel, this, this is a God of this. You have to defend your faith. You're not a coward, but some of you cannot even defend your faith. Somebody that is an atheist, somebody that is of a different religion, knows your book more than you. How they will take you serious? That's why when they tell you to go and buy oil of oil of Babylon, you go and buy oil of Babylon. Because if you are reading the word of God, you will know that the oil of Babylon does not exist. And you will know that there is nowhere in the Bible God tells you to go and get water of Galilee to bathe yourself. And you will know that baptism is not every Sunday when your white garment church gathers every day by the seaside. You will know because you will know that Jesus was baptized once. So were the disciples and all the believers. But because you, you don't know left, right, you don't know your left from your right, you don't know the word of God. You've now joined a church. That is telling you that, hey, open the, the, in the book of Goliath. I heard a, a, a man, you see the false, false, false prophets. They don't even have to know the, the, the books. Oh, well, well, the, when the book of Goliath or the book of Abraham. And that is the church you go to get fed. These things are happening, I'm telling you. I've, you go on YouTube, you'll be shocked. That day when I heard about the book of Goliath, <laughs> I, was, I was laughing, but it, it, it happens. And there are people going to the, these churches, listening to these pastors, obeying them, following instructions. Tell them to go midnight to some sort of place and, and, play Psalm, and pray Psalm 91 ten times. And as they pray and raise their hands and begin to do this, that their life will change. You, you, if you are reading the word of God, you know that that is not going to change your life. Change your life means repentance, means you repenting of your sins, confessing Christ as your savior and stop committing sin and sinful acts. If you want God to bless you. Let us go to Mark 11. Mark 11 from verse 22 to 24 reads, have faith in God. Jesus answered, truly, I tell you, 
If anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. I'm going to take you deep on this scripture. Because some of those, your prosperity pastors, they are using this scripture to bamboozle you to think that faith in God is all material, is for you to attain material things. If you are struggling with a sin, many of you are here. I don't care if it's corn, if it's an addiction. I don't care if it's gossiping. I don't care if it's adult. I don't know what sin you are struggling with. Look at the Bible. Have faith in God. Let's go further. Jesus answered, truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. You that have a problem, a sin, a difficulty, if you have faith, you will not sin again. Come on now. If you have faith, if you have faith, it's okay. Hello, Tisa. If you have faith, you will not sin again. I'm talking about sin. Oh, Sister Dalila, but I can't stop fornication. I can't stop adultery. I'm struggling with the, with, with, with the alcohol. I'm struggling with witchcraft. I'm struggling with the zodiac. I'm struggling with, with the tarot. Listen, if you have faith, come on now. You can say to that mountain, that mountain of addiction, that mountain of sin, that mountain of whatever it is, that ungodly situation, go throw yourself into the sea. And, the, and if you do not doubt in your heart, but you believe that what you have said will happen, that you will not drink again, you will not fornicate again, you will not lie again, engage in illegal activity again and crime again, you will not do all these different things. It will be done for you. Therefore, I'll tell you whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. I'm not going to struggle with this immorality anymore. I'm not going to struggle with this sin anymore. Because sin leads to what? The wages of sin are death. Some of you that you are constantly sick, it is because of an addiction. Whether addiction to food, whether addiction to substances. Infirmities come as a result of habits that lead to what? To death. Come on now. Don't use these scriptures just because you want a house, just because you want a palace. Just no. Struggling with sin, struggling to follow God. Oh, I'm fine. I find it very hard to pray. And well, tell God if you believe, if you say that I believe, this mountain of prayerlessness, I command you to be thrown into the sea. This mountain of doubt, negativity, negative pattern of thoughts, mediocrity. Do you know poverty is a mindset that is not aligned with the word of God? Some people think that poverty is lack of things. Sometimes it's not that you need things and money. Sometimes it's that you need to change how you think. Because you've been conditioned by Satan to have a mind of poverty. Poverty mindset. When you spend, spend, spend and you cannot save. It's not that God does not bless you. But when every money that comes to your hands, you must squander it. It's a mindset that you inherit from your parents. Your parents you were overspenders. So were your grandparents. Do you know that majority of children that come from deprived homes have an obesity problem? Rich kids don't have an obesity problem. It's very rare. You know why? Because we grew up in lack. When, listen, I'm going to tell you that poverty is a mindset. 
Because most of us here, I put my hand up, we grew up in luck. We didn't know whether tomorrow we're going to have ice cream. We're going to have whatever it is. So every time mom got uh, uh, something, we would just... Because why? We didn't... Rich people always have ice cream in their fridge, always have the best of fruits, always have the best of foods. They have a chef that cooks me. So for them, they're not, they don't have any food insecurity. So they will not overeat. Okay? Unless... And also, I'm not talking about just um, food insecurity. Sometimes the food is attached to what? A lack. Sometimes you, people are trying to compensate because they are bullied at school. They, are, they, they, are, they feel that they are different and they use food as comfort. There is that as well. But there are, you see, let me give you a comparator. Let me give you a comparison. Rich kids, most of them, they don't have problems with obesity. Because they always have food in their house. But because their parents are never around for them, they're always working. The parents don't give them the affection. They give them things. They give them, hand them over to nannies, hand them over to, to carers, caretakers, whatever. They develop addictions that some poor people don't because the poor, the poor kid would just eat, eat and watch a cartoon and be happy. And as a teenager, he would go and eat, 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 go somewhere with his friends and, and, and be a jolly good fellow. But the rich kid, because the parents are not present, there is a lot of problems in a house. Yes, there is money. There is resources available. There is everything. But there is no family. They then begin to go into addiction. Some of the rich young girls, because dad was never around to tell them how beautiful they are, valuable they are, they begin to get addicted to surgeries, addictive, addicted to substances, surgeries, to the lifestyle and this, because they are trying to compensate for something that they didn't have. That's why we pray against generational curses to break them. Rich people have them. Poor people have them. Okay? It's just that the devil is, acts differently in different bloodlines. But I'm just teaching you. Compare it. If your child is overeating, are you att giving attention to your child? Are you spending time with your child? Quality time. To hug that child, to get to know that child, to nurture that child, to mentor that child, to pray for that child, to take that child out, play with them. Are you, are you taking time or you're not? Do you even know your kids? Because it's not just rich people. Some of you here, you are working so hard, so hard. Your children are being abused with these carers, with these people. That you don't even know because why? You think that providing for your child is more important than you spending time with your child. You're going to have to make sacrifices. You're going to have to decide that having a career or having a child because... You could be dealing then in 20 years time with a situation that you will begin to feel like, hey, I'm in trouble. You put yourself in trouble. This is true. Let us go, saints, to Luke 1, 37. Don't worry, we're going to be here for long. Luke 1 to 37. Luke 1 to 30, Luke 1, 37, sorry. It says, for no word from God will ever fail. For no word from God will ever fail. What is essential that to produce faith in you? The word of God. What is the essential component to produce in you much faith? The word of God. 
And if you have the word of God in you, and if you have married the word of God and become one with the word of God, because the word of God is God. Nothing in your life will fail, even when it looks like it's failing, even when it looks like it's crumbling, even when it looks like it's falling apart. It's cosmetics. It's outward appearance. The true, the essential thing to understand here is that for no word from God will ever fail. If you have married the word of God, you are one with the word of God. Come on now. You are one with God. That means that that word is in you, right? Producing faith and therefore you cannot fail. You cannot fail. Because you receive that word of God that cannot fail. Come on now. Is it making sense? For no word of, from God will ever fail. Meaning that everything that God has released through his word will come to pass. You are what the Bible says that you are, not what the world thinks you are. If the word of the Lord is saying that you are blessed and highly favored, whether you are having difficulties or not, that does not invalidate what God has already spoken, that you are blessed and highly favored. For no word from God will ever fail. If God has said to you that you are the head and not the tail, no matter what is going on in your life at present, you are still the head and not the tail. I remember when I was a child and my grandmother used to say something interesting to me. She used to say, Dalila, poverty <coughs> or lack of things does not justify uncleanliness. Ever seen those people that say they don't shower, they don't iron their clothes, they don't do anything because they're poor. Their poverty has become an excuse for them not to have any love, any pride. You could be poor and have just two changes of clothes. But every time you wash those clothes, it's clean. You iron them. You wash yourself. You present yourself clean. That shows your faith that you understand that you are the head and not the tail. Although in difficulty, you are not a pig. You are not a beggar. You are not a desperado. Although on minimum wage, toiling on that job and having sugar daddies approach, approaching you to give you some money on the side because you know that you are the head and not the tail, you will say, no, I deserve better. God has something better for me. Come on now. Come on. When some boyfriend tells you, oh, come to my house, you say, no, I'm a daughter of Zion. Where is my ring? Where is my engagement? Come on now. I'm the apple of God's eyes. That is not how the apple of God's eyes lives and behaves. I deserve more. Oh, but you are getting too old. Perhaps you should just find someone to have a child with. Look, Sarah never did that. Come on now. Stick to God. He has promised you. He has said of you that you are the head and not the tail. That is what you are. You are just the head in difficulties. You are the head but passing through some testing. You are still the head but passing through some harsh times. But you are still the head. Just because you are having problems, 
you you have not now permanently become the tail. You cannot be that that God has not spoken over you. Come on now. In difficulties, still applying lipstick. In many sorrows, still combing your hair, uh, doing those finger waves or whatever it is you do, baby hairs. In difficulties, still showing up clean, nice, smelling good. Come on now. Because we know where God is leading us to. is to glory land. It's not to hell. Come on now. Some man is telling you, move in with me and we will live like a couple. You said that is not God's promise to me. The Bible tells me about a kingdom, a bridegroom and a bride. And it tells me about a feast and garments. And it tells me about an adornments for brides. I'm not about to live that life. Bye-bye, take good care. If you cannot see any value in me, you are mediocre to me as well. Bye. Value yourself. That is called that you know that you have faith. Not settling for less. Oh, yes. Oh, but Sister Dalila, I've got two kids. And so what? The promise, is that going to invalidate the promise of God? Are you not a new creation in Christ? If you are a new creation, what does the Bible say of concerning your life? That you are to live a righteous life. And any man that is approaching you for unrighteousness needs to go. Is not even fit for you to entertain. Come on now. You know why some of you don't get married? Giving everything for free. Even the prostitutes in the corner, the constitutes in the corner are charging for their services. You are not charging nothing. They are coming to your house. They are eating your food, scraping your pot and ending up in your bed and, 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 and not marrying you and disappearing. And then when they feel like it, come back again. Who will marry you like that? They will even, even have more respect to pay that lady, the lady of the night and pay her well. Because she's providing a serve. By you, you are free goods. Who will marry you? Who will marry you? And you, the gentleman, the same thing. Jumping from one place to another, doing foolishness. Who will marry you? Come on now. If you have a cow, you live in a farm. You have a cow that looks like doesn't have an owner, but is giving good milk. You go there and get the milk and go about your business. You are not going to bring the cow into your yard and keep it and having to care for that cow and having to pay the vet bill and whatever it is that requires to look after the cow. You're just going to go to the corner, get the milk, whatever, and that's it. You're gone. It's the word of God. No one will appreciate things for free. No one appreciates anything that is for free. If you have a business, be business minded. When your friends come out, do it for free because I'm your friend. Listen, friendship apart, here is my business establishment. I'm not here in the capacity of being your friend. I'm here in the capacity to make money. Either you pay me for my service or see you later. Come on now. If you see a man coming to you, oh, I like you. I say, you say to that man, prove it. You like me, right? Do the right thing. When you're ready to do the right thing, come and talk to me. Come on now. It is as simple as that. Have you ever seen those designer brands making sales? You will never. You try to go to the Ferrari and ask them for discount on the <laughs> special edition, this, this, Ferrari, this. They will never, ever. It's either you have the money and come complete with the, with the monies and buy the vehicle or don't even come near us. We will not even entertain. Simple as that. It's as simple as that. I'm sorry, plus tax, Sister Lorian, indeed. I'm sorry if you want to be offended. No one likes free goods. 
When you go to the supermarket and you see those ladies with food giving testers to people, people will just take and use it anyhow because it's free. Because it's free. That is the truth. But once you say, oh, we have these goods on display, but it's a hundred, a hundred, a hundred dollars, a hundred pounds. People will not come. Only those who can afford will come and pay and get it. <clears throat> Designer shops, only the people who have money are going to enter. Us that we are not on that level, we just walk on by. Because, hey, we can't afford it. But some of you is goodwill. You goodwill people. Anyone has your phone number. Anyone comes to your house. How can we live like that as children of God with such a lower standard of ourselves? Everyone has access to you. Anyone thinks that they can talk to you anyhow. How does that glorify God? I don't allow people to talk to me anyhow, you know. I don't care how much I love you. All right? If you talk to me anyhow, bye-bye. That means I'm not made to be your friend. And if I am in the capacity of a woman of God, I am not the one that God has established to preach to you. I don't disrespect anyone. And I don't tolerate disrespect. If you disrespect me once or you disrespect somebody that I know, you are gone. Fix yourself. And then when you fix yourself, come back. Simple as that. And I, and I don't have many friends. I don't talk, talk to many people. Because I'm a person, I treat everyone with, with respect. I don't care if he's a beggar, a homeless person, rich or poor. I don't care. Everybody, yes, sir, no, sir, I treat everybody with respect. If you disrespect me, you're gone. Okay? It's as simple as that. If I see you disrespecting a person, I don't care if that person is not my friend. That person is gone. It's as simple as that. So I want to say this to you. You need to know your value in Christ. You are a jewel for God. You want to know what is your worth? Jesus nailed on the cross. That is how much you were worth. The son of God dead on that cross for you. Simple as that. Jesus never tolerated disrespect from no one. Mm -mm. People assume that because you are a Christian, you are a soft, you have to tolerate abuse. I don't. I don't have. Look at the prophet Elijah when they began to mock him. We don't. If I treat you with respect, I expect the same. And if there is no respect, the relationship cannot go forward because for what? I'm a no-nonsense no woman. I don't tolerate abuse. I don't care if, listen, if I sense that you are abusing me, you are not treating me with respect, I'm gone. Obviously, I, don't, I hold, I bear no grudge because I, I'm not going to allow my heart to be filled with, with all sorts of evil. It's just that I keep a distance and I pray for you. Let us go to the word of God. Faith and deeds faith and deeds James 2 from 14 to 26 James 2 14 to 26 forgiveness has nothing to do with not allowing abuse that's why many young ladies die saints that's why many women are, are, are advised by their pastors to stay with their abusive spouses and they end up unalive. You can forgive people and love people from a distance and pray for them with your whole heart. But if their heart is not right 
And because their heart is not right with God, all it comes out from them is abuse. Jesus will not... Why do, do, do people are unalived in abusive relationships, toxic relationships? Because they think that because they are believers, they have to tolerate that. Jesus has already died on the cross. You want to accept him and obey him? That's enough. I am not Jesus that died for you on the cross. So I will pray for you and lead you to the cross in prayer. And I will pray for you and I will not hold any grudge or any resentment towards you because you are a child of God. But as for me, relate to you. Mm -mm. I love God too much to live in, in pain with people beating me at night and slapping me left, right and center. People talking to me anyhow, using vulgar language. No, sir. My, my, my relationship with God is so, is so important that I don't even entertain negativity. I have no time for it. Let us go, James 2, from verse, 20, from verse 14 to 26. James 2, 14 to 26. Faith and deeds. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith Save them. Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you stays, says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working to together and his faith was made complete by what he did and the scripture was fulfilled that says abraham believed god and it was credited to him as righteousness and he was called god's friend you see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone in the same way was not even rahab the constitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. So faith is a confession. By faith we confess Jesus right, as Lord and Savior right. But by deeds we serve him to prove the confession of faith. It was, only the minute, it was only by the minute that Abraham rendered his sacrifice, his son Isaac, on that altar, that it was credited to him as righteousness. Faith must be accompanied by works. Come on now. Because faith without deeds is dead. You have faith. But where are the works of your faith? The works back your faith. Simple as that. If you see a brother and a sister in need. Yes, pray for them. It is important that you pray. But if they are in any physical need, clothing, shelter, whatever. You're going to meet that need. Because you are not just making a confession of faith. You are also proving with your deeds that you indeed have faith. You believe what you believe because you, your actions. Prove it. How many people tell you that they love you? But their actions show that they really hate you. In the way they speak to you. In the way they treat you. In the way they are not present when you need them. 
How many men of God, they say they love God. They've been called by God, but their actions prove that they, they, they listen, they are not working for God. They are working for the enemy. Come on now. So if we have confessed Christ and we believe him, there must be an act of our faith. Our faith needs to be followed by an, an act of faith. Rahab proclaimed that she believed the God of Israel, that he was powerful and mighty. All right? But it's only when she lodged the spies, protected the spies, and, and, and allowed them to escape unharmed, that she proved how, uh, her faith in the God of Israel. Same thing, for instance, when somebody tells you, you the ladies, a, a gentleman is saying that they love you, but they are not faithful to you. Okay, you have a gentleman that says that they love you and they want to marry you and they believe that you and him can, he believes that you and him can be an item, can be a family and everything. But that, that gentleman is cheating on you, you're not even married. He's demanding from you intimacy, you're not even married. He's already wanting to come to your house, use your money, use your car, use everything. By those by, by the works that he demonstrates, he's telling you that he does not love you. He just wants to use you. You know, these things have to be preached, you know. You make mistakes. Marry a user, marry a abuser, toxic person, have friends that are toxic, only want to be your friends because you have a car, because you have a house that can lodge them, because you have a good job. There is nowhere in the Bible that says that you should allow to be misused and abused by nobody. The Bible sends destiny help us. The, 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 the God sends destiny help us, not destiny destroyers. That is facts. You married somebody, you are now in that marriage. But your, your husband or your wife is cheating on you. Extramarital affair. Spending money with other women or vice versa. It could be the woman spending money with other men and doing all these different things. They don't love you. You are, you are fooling yourself. If they loved you, they will be committed to you. And love, saints, is not you liking somebody. Listen. Love is not just you liking somebody's physical appearance because she's beautiful, he's handsome. That is not going to hold a marriage. You know what is going to hold a marriage? God, right? But also respect. Marriage is about respect. If you don't respect that woman, if you don't respect that man, that marriage cannot go forward. And it's the same thing between us and God. It's a marriage. We are in a covenant with God. We are in a, we are married to God. But some of us, we are married to God, but we don't respect God. Have you seen those wives that talk to their husbands anyhow in public? Or vice versa. Husbands, they talk to their wives like they are a maid. Oh, my wife, she's, she's not beautiful. My wife does not know, she's not pol polished. Because they don't give the wife any money. They don't give the wife any money to go say, hey, go and do your hair, darling. Go and do your nails. But they're expecting that, that, that her to look like those women that are working. When they are, she's a stay-at-home mom. She's already stressed out with the kids, looking after the house and everything. And having to do that with limited resources. And the husband does not appreciate and is out there <laughs> doing all sorts of things. That means that that husband doesn't have any respect for that woman. Because if he had, he will treat her right. 
and vice versa. It's not just the husbands that do it. Women are doing it too. I've seen women talking to husbands like, open that door and let me in. Why are you taking so long to, 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 to do this, to, to, to whatever, in public? People that she does not know. She's talking to the husband like that because she has no respect for him. And that is us, some of us, the way we, we relate to God. The way we relate to God. We have no respect for God. No regard for God. No respect. So our acts, our deeds are dead. I don't care how much you say you love Jesus. If I see you in public treating your family like that, I'm not going to believe that you love Jesus because people who love Jesus are kind. You understand? Some of you, you just have a badge of being a Christian. But your deeds prove otherwise. It's time for us to check. Examine ourselves. Let us go 2 Timothy 4, 7. We are about to end, saints. 2 Timothy 4, 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. So in this fight called life, this race called life that we fight to keep alive, we have to keep what? The faith. If you don't keep the faith, you are not going to be able to run this race called life with dignity before God and man. The only thing that keeps us together sometimes when people do things to us, mistreat us, abuse us, is our faith in God. That vengeance is the Lord. That, it, 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 that, that in life we're going to be persecuted. Because we've chose to be on the side of God. What makes us refrain our tongue and not saying certain things to certain people that are acting up? It is because of our faith in God. We know that that is not what God wants us to do. And we would rather please God than please our flesh by insulting someone, exchanging words with someone and being rude to someone. You see, faith is deeper than just having conviction that God can give you things. For you to sustain a life of righteousness, you need faith. Because there are going to come times in your life that you are going to want to take matters into your own hands. And that is when you will understand that you need faith to trust that God is in control. God will avenge. God will vindicate. God will fight for you. James 1, 6 says, James 1, 6. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. You know why some of you are still stuck in the same condition in life? Same sin, same cycle of abuse, same cycle of poverty, same cycle of infirmity because you keep ask. But when you ask in prayer, you don't believe that God has already done it. The Bible tells us that when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Lord, I'm asking you to be free from this addiction. And I believe that I'm already free in Jesus name. Don't doubt. If you ask. If you have asked God, he's done it for you. If you've asked him sincerely with faith, it's already done. It's not a matter of negotiation, no. Because the Bible tells us when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. If you are praying by doubting, don't pray at all. If you are praying, but you are doubting, don't pray at all. 
It will not happen. You're wasting your time. It's not going to happen. It's not going to move mountains. And some of you, because you have doubt, your prayers always change. First, you started saying, oh, Lord, because I have a large family, I'm asking for a six bedroom house so that my children will not sleep all on top of the other. So that my mommy and daddy, when they come, they can have also a spare room to stay and not be piled up on top. You began to pray like that. And now that, that doubt has kicked in. Hey, Lord, even if it's a two bedroom, I'm glad with the two bedroom. But did you not pray for the six bedroom because you have seven kids and you and your husband? So, so, so what happened? No faith at all. You are doubting like a way you are like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. You are praying, but then you are seeing dollar sign. Hey, hey this money is too much. You re let me reduce my prayer. God has said a hundred thousand, but eh, hmm, with this economy, 10 K then I, 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 I will satisfy with that. Then, then you are wasting your time. Because number one, you are praying in, in your doubting God. Praying in many doubts. So why did you pray to begin with? Because the Bible is telling us here, when you ask God, you must believe and not doubt. So if you are going before the throne of God with doubt, hey, go about your business. This life is not for you. Come on now. It is not... <laughs> This is not a game for you. It's not a game for you. Oh God, hey, I'm praying the scholarship for my son Johnny. He's about to graduate from, from my son Johnny is about to graduate from high school. Lord, you're telling me the scholarship is a hundred k or whatever. Hey, hey, God, hey, allow me to borrow money. What prayer is that? First, God provide the money. First, God make the funds available. Now you hear God. What, what about a bank that I, I can go and borrow money and they will accept? You see? How even the angels that are in heaven with pen and paper to take notes, they are confused. Eh? But this one is not sister. This one is not sister Martha. Hold on, hold on. They tell the other, other angels. Eh? Paper to take notes. They are confused. Eh? But this one is not sister this one is not Sister Martha. Hold on, hold on. They tell the other, other angels, hey. Hmm? And, and the devil will whisper, hey, you think you, you are asking God too much. You are asking for your need. Let's say, for instance, you genuinely have seven kids. Do you think that a two-bedroom house is enough for you and all of those children? What does the Bible says? Be fruitful and multiply. God backs you up in the fruitfulness. You've been fruitful. You multiplied. Ask God to multiply the house then. To accommodate the multiplication and, and the increase. Come on now. Do you think God is going to sit down in heaven like your local authority? Hey, this woman has too many kids. He says, be fruitful. Replenish the earth. Be fruitful. And you obeyed the commandment of God to the teeth. You were fruitful. Multiply. The eighth child is coming and you have a cot in your bed. So how is the two bedroom house gonna gonna do? Number one, you're gonna have fights in that bathroom. What you know, you're gonna have war. Some of you you have prayed, Lord, I'm praying for this house, but don't want I don't want no mortgage. I want to Father Lord, I want a house, cash. And the next day you are beginning to to watch the news and how people are getting repossessed and, and this and hey, hmm, might as well I pray mortgage. You see, you are like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Blown and tossed by the wind. Today you believe, tomorrow you don't believe. That is why nothing changes. And some of you, you pr not only you pray and don't believe, but you pray and you begin to complain. Very dangerous. Oh Lord, I have prayed, but as I can see, hey, they are saying that they're not going to give me. They, are, they, they have called me yesterday that they are not coming. Hey Lord, I prayed, but they are, they are already telling me they're not going to do it. Is it them that is your God or is God that is your God that opens door that no man can shut? You've prayed, right? 
and you have faith, it will happen. Relax, go to sleep. Stop keeping yourself awake at night. It's not going to change anything. It's only going to make you sick. Are you the, listen, the Bible says silver and gold is mine, that says the Lord. You don't own any silver and gold. Allow the one who owns it then to do it for you. And to close, last scripture, because I told you this live stream is going to be long. Hebrews 11, 6. Hebrews 11, 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. How do you please God? How do you please God? With your faith. Number one. You go to him because you believe that he exists. Number two, you also believe that he is a faithful rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So when you go to your God, you know that he is Baba God. You know that you are to put some respect on his name. The God of Israel has never lost a battle. There has never been a battle that the God of Israel was involved in, that the Israelites lost the battle. Come on now. There has never been a battle that God was involved that he lost. That is how I'm, look at God's track record. He never fails. The door that he opens, no man can shut. And the door that he shuts, no man can open. Look at the track record. Father of the fatherless. Husband of the widowers. God of the foreigners. Oh, yes. <coughs> God that does wonders and miracles. Parts the Red Sea for his children. Takes Joseph from the pit to the palace. Snatches Daniel out of the den of lions, him and his little friends. Come on now. Does not allow the fire referring to burn Shadrach, Mezak, and, and Abdenigo. Allows a hundred year old man and a eight and a ninety year old woman to conceive and have a child successfully without that thing that they do it now, IVF. Which IVF, by the way, is not of God. If you are doing that, stop it. Because how do they get the sperm? The man has to commit constipation in order to release the seed. Sin. They want to be God. Mix, mix the thing with the egg, fertilize. Tell me how that is of God. Tell me. That's why some of you, God has not allowed you to conceive through that because it's not his will, because it's against him. Because you don't know what demons can infiltrate that project of a baby. I've said it. As a woman of God. You are following Christ with all your faith. With all your heart. With all your soul. Don't you worry about them bills. Don't worry about that, that rent anymore. Don't worry about those children anymore. Don't worry about that situation anymore. Because God promises us. That is a faithful rewarder of all those who diligently seek him. And that our faith in him. Oh God, he's pleased when we have faith. It, the only way you please God is by faith. It's by faith that you obey God. Because without faith you cannot obey God. If you have faith that God 
is a faithful reward of the, all those who diligently seek him. You are not going to sin because you want God's reward. You want to go. What is the ultimate reward? Is to go to heaven with him. If God parted the Red Sea for the Israelites to escape that slavery system of Egypt, will not do it for you. Will, not, will he not part your Red Sea? If God could heal blind Bartimaeus, blind from birth, will he not heal you? Come on now. If, if God can raise the dead like he did Lazarus, and the little girl, he said to the little girl, Talita Kumai, little girl, get up. Will he not resurrect your marriage? Will he not resurrect your finances? Will he not open the door for you to have that house to be able to accommodate your family? Will he not do it for you, saints? Come on now. Have faith in God. And say, God, today is the last day of my life that I will smoke this substance, this cigarette. Today is the last day of my life that I'm going to fornicate, commit adultery. It ends today. Because I want to please you with my faith. I want to please you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let us go into many prayers, saints. And some of us need to be delivered from a poisonous tongue. Our tongues, we believe something, but our tongues are confessing defeat. Confessing all sorts of things that are against the word of God. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. What is the state of your tongue? Are you speaking life or death into your situation because of your tongue? Examine yourself before we go into prayer. Proverbs 15, 4, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. But perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. What have you been confessing with your tongue? Is your tongue a tree of life or not? Isaiah 54 says, The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as he learned, as the learned. You need to know what words to speak in what season. In that season of suffering, it's time to speak life. Okay. So some of you that the Holy Spirit is already telling you that, look, your problem is your tongue. Your problem are your prayers, your complaining, your inability to trust God, your lack of faith. Let us all collectively as a congregation begin to repent and go before the Lord asking him for help. Abba Father, King of glory, everlasting God. You are our Father in heaven, Lord, and in you we trust and we have our being. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for being here with us. We thank you, Father Lord, for your divine protection. We thank you, Father Lord, for your word in due season. Your word brings healing and restoration. Your word brings transformation. Your word, Father Lord, brings us closer to you, builds and strengthens our faith. And we thank you for that, Lord. And as per instruction of the Holy Ghost, 
Some of us, we are guilty of God of speaking death into our situation. And, and that is why we cannot move forward in life. We are constantly living in defeat because we cannot speak life into our situation. We cannot pray and believe. We are plagued with worry and anxiety. We believe one day, but the next day we, are, we don't believe. Just like the waves of the sea toss and turn. And we are tired of living like that, Lord God. And therefore we are here in your presence to repent for speaking death and not life. For entertaining, Father Lord, everything that is evil, Lord God. Everything that is, does not glorify you, Lord God. So, Father Lord, we thank you for your holy presence as we surrender to you, as we repent from all our sins and iniquities. Hallelujah. And we thank you for your faithfulness. Because you can see our faults. You can see, Father Lord, what we are doing wrong. And you bring correction, much needed correction. And we accept the chastisement. We accept the correction. Asking you for forgiveness, Lord God. And covering ourselves with the precious blood of your son, Yeshua. We command all the spiritual evil in our lives to be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. We paralyze and nullify the activities of jungle and vagabond spirits in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. We decree the exit Father Lord of the following spirits from our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We decree the exit of the spirits of lying, speech perversion, exaggeration, stammering, talkativeness, nagging, cursing, and murmuring in Jesus' mighty name. Let the fire of God purge our tongues from the condemnation of evil consumption, evil vows, Demonic incision, evil marks and labels, oral S, evil kisses, herbal concoctions, and sensual perversions in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, deliver us from the spirits of self-destruction. We cut ourselves off from every spirit of tongue and venomous speech in the mighty name of Jesus. We command every venomous and acidic trait in us, inherited or acquitted, to depart in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every serpentine spirit and poison depart from our tongue in the mighty name of Jesus. We command every agent of bondage and destruction in our tongue to depart in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, repair all damages done to our lives as a result of the wrong use of our tongues. We command the evil progress of the enemies in our lives to be halted in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, deliver our tongue from becoming a cemetery of evil in the mighty name of Jesus. We command the evil progress of the enemies in our lives to be halted in the mighty name of Jesus. We withdraw all the evil words we have uttered against our lives, homes, children, families, from the satanic bank in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, deliver our lives from the hand of evil broadcasters in the mighty name of Jesus. We refuse to turn back at the edge of our miracles in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, heal us of all diseases of the tongue in Jesus' mighty name. We lose ourselves from the grip of territorial and tribal spirits. In the mighty name of Jesus, let every, every problem in our lives that originated from evil tongue, witchcraft and familiar spirit curses, medical and clinical prophecies, demonic prophecy, all strange tongues receive divine instant solution in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, give us a wholesome tongue in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, make our voice the voice of deliverance, healing, power, Solution and life in Jesus' mighty name. We praise you, Abba Father, because we know that by faith it is done. We have the victory, Father Lord, not because of what the enemy is saying or not saying, 
But we have the victory because of what your word says, that we are more than conquerors in Jesus' name, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthen us. And we know that if God is for us, who can be against us? Almighty God, everlasting Father, sovereign Lord, we hail you, O King of glory. And we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that guides us in all honesty, in all righteousness, in all works of salvation. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we believe. Amen, amen, and amen. There is a person here on this live stream. You have an item that is a cursed item and is the old sin eye or the eye of Horus. Either you have that as an ornament or as a piece of jewelry, but I can see the old sin eye. Write capital me to repent. Write capital me to repent. You're going to have to get rid of that piece where they, I see it as like a big old sin eye. I don't quite, it looks like a piece of art. Like a painting. Right, capital me. You cannot have that item in your home. It's a cursed item. It represents Horus. The eye of Horus. It's an eye. The old sin eye. If you have it in jewelry as well, right, capital me. You, got, you have a necklace. You need to get rid of it, my darling. That is a cursed item. And the reason why you are going through so much, it is because of that item. It's a cursed item. Two people have now identified, but God was showing me that that needs to go from your house. The old sin eye represents the eye of Horus, an Egyptian god. Okay, it's, it's a high symbol in the occult as well because they believe in Ra. They believe in, the, in that God. Get rid of it. Two sisters have identified and you need to get rid of it immediately because it's a cursed item and that entity is in your house. Doing the most. The children of Israel mustn't have such things as in jewelry. Yeah, they can't have it, sister. Don is got to go. It's a cursed item. It brings in curses, problems. Some of the problems that many Christians have, it is because of the cursed items they have in their homes, always piece of jewelry. Hallelujah. Because the devil infiltrates through these things. To get a hold and control of a family or a child. Hallelujah. You will see that many famous people will do this when they take pictures or they do this. They are telling you that that is whom they worship. You have a, a tiny one as a that. You're going to have to get rid of it, Sister Card. It's got to go. If you don't have the money now, it's fair enough. Anoint that place and say, God, I cancel this tattoo. And when you do have the money, you can go and have it removed by laser. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Get rid of it, Brother Tony Norris, okay? Get rid of it. Abba Father, thank you for this word of knowledge. Thank you, Lord God of Israel. You are wonderful. You are powerful. You are mighty. To deliver and to heal. To restore and to transform, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, King of glory. We thank you, everlasting God, everlasting Father. Thank you, Jesus. There is a person here for the last three, last three months. You have lost everything. In fact, your prayer, Lord, what else will I lose my life? For the last three months, you have been losing everything. You lost your, first you lost your vehicle, then you lost your job, and now even your house is about to go. And it was sudden. It was just like that, without any warning. Write capital me. God wants to speak to you. Right, capital me. You are on this live stream. For the past three months, you have lost so much. 
that you prayed, Lord. What else? Sister Naya Julie, listen. You had an argument with somebody, right? And that is where it all started. That person vowed because of your audacity to argue with them that you're going to lose everything. They had an argument with you. They said to you, you're going to lose everything. They argue with you and, and, and they cursed you. But the Bible says, who can curse to whom God has blessed? So every curse pronounced against your head, against your destiny, against your life is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. It's broken in the mighty name of Jesus. It's broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive restoration of your crown of glory. Receive restoration of your scepter of authority of your destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus. God is going to give you better. Give me just a second. The kids have arrived from school and have been... One sec. Ezra and Tirza. Ezra and Tirza. I'm on the live stream. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To, my Both my kids are home today. They just come from school and they're having, talking loud. I apologize. Receive the victory in the mighty name of Jesus. That that you have lost. A thousand folds will return to you. A thousand folds will return to you. A thousand folds has been restored unto you. I see you at your throne of your destiny. I see you wearing that crown of, of, of glory. I see you with the scepter of authority of your destiny. You will reign again. You will be at the throne of your destiny. Receive it. That person is exposed. That witch is exposed. That agent of darkness is exposed. That bewitchment is broken today. You are going to come back and testify that the Lord has done it for you. Come back and testify. Lord, the Lord restored me a thousand folds. Hallelujah. Receive a thousand folds restoration. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There is a person here on this live stream that you were invited by a friend to have some food at her place. And she served you seafood. A friend of yours invites you for lunch or dinner. Dinner. Sorry, I get confused sometimes. A friend invites you to dine with her at her house. And the food was seafood. I see all sorts of seafood. From prawns to crabs. Lobsters. Things like that. Seafood. Right, capital me. Not you, transformation, but that person that God is speaking went to this lunch or dinner and had that food. That food that you ate that day was consecrated to the marine kingdom. Some prayers were made on that food, some declarations were spoken over that food to siphon your greatness but it's broken in the mighty name of jesus the bewitchment through that food i command you to vomit that seafood that you have eaten from the table of the enemy in the mighty name of jesus vomit 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 by the power of, that is in the name of jesus i speak the blood of jesus to go inside of your intestines and begin to experience excrete everything in the mighty name of Jesus. I command everything to come out, come out, vomit, 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 vomit it all out in Jesus mighty name and be set free in the mighty name of Jesus. If you need to go to the toilet, to, you feel something, go and, and allow it to come out. God is purging you with his blood. The Holy Ghost is going into inside of you like a fire to cleanse you from all that demonic food that you have eaten from the table of the enemy. In Jesus' mighty name. Burp and vomit in the mighty name of Jesus. Burp and vomit in the mighty name of Jesus. Burp and vomit, 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 vomit by the power that is in the name of Jesus. Must come out, come out, come out, come out. Evil deposit in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Hallelujah. There is a person here that has problems with their back. Chronic back pain. And the reason why you are you even at work, you are relying on painkillers just to be on your, at your desk because you have a, a terrible chronic back pain. Receive your healing in the mighty name of Jesus. That spirit of infirmity be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Be gone in the mighty name of Jesus and never return again. In Jesus mighty name. In Jesus mighty name. Receive your healing. And come back to testify that the Lord has done it for you. Glory be to God. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Abba Father. Thank you King of Glory. There is a person here, diabetes runs in your family. You don't have diabetes, but you have fear that you will develop that, develop that, that infirmity because it runs in the family. Right, capital me. I speak prophetically over your life. You have the DNA of Christ and you will not be sick with that infirmity in the mighty name of Jesus. That infirmity ends with your ancestors. You will not pass on to your life. You will not pass on to your children. In Jesus' mighty name. Nothing to fear. You have the DNA of Jesus. Don't live in fear. You have the DNA of Jesus. That does not mean that you should go and have a very bad, poor diet. And because you have the DNA of Jesus. Because you have the DNA of Jesus, you will eat well. You will eat healthy meals. Because you have the DNA of Jesus. And you are the temple of God. Hallelujah. There is a person here that you always have this reoccurrent dream. And the dream is that your hands and your legs are tied. You know when criminals tie people with ta duct tape, duct tape their hands, duct, duct tape their feet. You have a dream like that and it's a reoccurrent dream every now and again. You have that dream. Right capital me. Right capital me. Right, Capital Me, you that you have that recurrent dream of seeing yourself with hands bound, feet bound. And you are trying to release yourself and you can't. And that dream is recurrent. Right, Capital Me, very quickly. Don't delay the chat. Don't delay God. Identify quickly. You that have that dream of being bound in your feet and being bound in your um, hands. And you can't release yourself in the dream. And this is a reoccurrent dream. You have your daughter. I release your daughter from every demonic and satanic prison in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, your daughter is free. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your daughter is free. In the mighty name of Jesus. Don't worry about diabetes. You will not have diabetes. The Lord is reassuring you here that you have his DNA. Worry not. Trust in God. Wo Worry about nothing and pray about everything with faith. And God that is faithful will answer you. Hallelujah. Anyone here that would like to accept today Jesus as Lord and Savior? Anyone here that would like to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior? Write capital me in the chat to surrender your life to Christ. That takes faith and courage. Anyone here that would like today to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, write capital me. Simply amazing. Welcome, beloved. Sister Anna, welcome, beloved. You are welcome into the kingdom of Christ Jesus. Heaven rejoices and celebrates. Angels are shouting your name. Hallelujah. And what has taken place in the kingdom of, of, of God is that the Lord Jesus has erased your name from the book of hell and eternal damnation and has written your name in his book of life. Welcome, Sister April White. And now that you are born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, you are a new creation. You cannot return to your vomit like a, like a dog. So if you are on substances, 
doing, committing acts of fornication, adultery, including your reds, committing acts of adultery, fornication, lying, stealing, deceiving. Committing adultery, engaging in occultic activities on the zodiac, collecting crystals and stones. You have to leave all these things behind to follow Christ. And for you to be able to follow Christ wholeheartedly, diligently, with great faith, you're going to need to become a student of the Word of God. Therefore, if you are an English-speaking person, you can reconcile Miss S.C. to Christ today. Reconcile to Christ. Ask Him for forgiveness and say, Lord, I backslidden, but I'm back. Accept me back. And become a student of the Word of God. Surrender your life to Him in terms of learning His Word. If you are an English-speaking person, get a King James Bible. And begin to learn the word of God. Begin to meditate upon the word of the Lord. Okay? The Bible says that study the word of God to find yourself approved before God and man. Develop a lifestyle of prayer, fasting, seeking the face of God, a life of worship and a lifestyle of righteousness. Because faith without deeds is dead. Hallelujah. So precious saints. I want to, to encourage you. To come back and study the word of God with us every day. We gather from Mondays. To Saturdays from 1 to 2.30 p.m. United Kingdom hour, London time. Google it, please, and check your time zone and so that you will not miss us here. I would like to invite you all also to uh, subscribe to our YouTube page so that if for whatever reason we cannot gather here again, um, because Congress in the U.S. has uh, decreed that this platform be shut down in, from September 11th. I think so. So come back. Go to my bio, please, and you will see there the YouTube icon, subscribe. <clears throat> okay? Subscribe and you will have access to that platform and to all the content there. But not only that, if by any eventuality we cannot gather here, the live streams will be broadcasted on that platform instead to accommodate our brothers and sisters from the U.S. Be mindful, saints, of fake accounts creating um, profiles with my name, image, content, asking you for money in exchange of prophetic declarations, asking you for donations to Nigeria to an orphanage. That is not me. Sending you a message begins to dear child of God is not Sister Dalila. Number one, I do not have any alternative accounts. Number two, I will never send you a message to ask you for money. If you would like to donate to help with the furtherance of the gospel, you can do so by going to my bio here and you will see there the, the PayPal information and also um, you will see there the YouTube icon as well for you to subscribe. If you encounter any of these fake accounts, because I understand there are many of them, report and block. Um, thank you, Sister Cheyenne, for reminding us of the fasting. Our corporate fasting begins on the 15th and it ends on the 31st, as you all do. And don't forget the anointing of your homes for seven days. Some of you have done three days already and you are waiting to complete the rest. But if you are here for the first time and you would like to embark on that journey of anointing your home for seven days, you might as well join us by faith and complete the rest of the days because so far this ministry has done three days of anointing our homes. I want to also remind you that Holy Communion and Consecration Days are now held 
on Saturdays, which is tomorrow instead of Mondays. Okay. So if you would like to subscribe to 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 consecrate the anointing oil and olive oil tomorrow because you have none and you want to consecrate some holy water bring the um olive oil and the water tomorrow and will be consecrated if you want to, would like to consecrate your children any documentation bring those tomorrow as well and um if you would like to also dedicate your children br um, bring them tomorrow and it will be done and for the holy communion um you will need matzo bread and you will need also grape juice i'm glad sister g Collins, that you've been blessed by the youtube page that's why we have it there so let me pray for you saints before you all go abba father king of glory i thank you so much for the precious saints that came to this live stream today thank you for their lives Lord god thank you for the souls that have come father lord to repent and be, become born again thank you for the wonderful signs and wonders and miracles that you have done that you are doing and constantly performing on this live stream and we know that we don't deserve it lord father lord as your children are leaving today i'm asking you father lord surround them with your glory surround them with your presence be a wall of fire and of protection around them father lord i pray that as they make a commitment, Father Lord, to read your word so that their faith levels can go up. Father Lord, sustain them in the path of righteousness. Continue to feed them with your word, Lord God. Continue to give them the strength to keep going. Those who are in need of deliverance because they are tormented by demons, deliver them, Lord God. Those that are in need of a financial miracle to be able to take care of their family with great dignity. Father Lord, open the floodgates of your heavenlies and grant them the victory. Those that are sick, unable to breathe with all different infirmities. Lord, I pray for healing. Healing of their bodies, but also healing of their souls, their hearts and their spirits in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I thank you for your children and I commit them into your hands. I'm asking you that you watch over them, that you will protect them, that you will deliver them from all evil, that you will, Father Lord, release from your heavenly armies of angels to encamp around them and to protect them all around the clock, Lord God, 24-7. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let me pray for the faithful tithers and givers of this ministry. Almighty God, King of glory, I consecrate before you the tidings and the offerings, Father Lord, of all the faithful tithers and givers of this ministry. Receive their tidings, Lord God. Receive their offerings, Lord God. According to your promises to them in Malachi 3.10, according to the promises, Father Lord, of Deuteronomy 28 and the blessings of Abraham. And visit, Father Lord, in thy faithfulness, beloved sister Lori Nobles Gray, Family members Anthony, Cade, and J.C. Nick, Daddy Leo Laterica, Sister Geraldine Collins and husband Alfonso, Sister Roberta Davis, Joanna Victorino, Foley Budrick, Smarta Sam, Brenda Pizarro, and son Kevin, Selena Bradley, Teresa Sullivan, Janet Thompson, Antoinette Fleming, Jade Wekun, Chantel Small, Tawana Watson, Jasmine Mitchell, Tyron Harris, Veronica Quayle, Terry White, Anisu Gale, C. Michelle Johnson, Karen Lewis, Natalie Rahel, Magdalene Kowalska, Byron Dumas, Myrna Bonilla, Geraldine Chambers, Mary Toe, Kito Milako, Jewel Sample and husband Dishon, Rekita Wola, parents Raymond and Renova, family members Kane, Lakeisha, Kelvin, Kaylee, Cameron, Leighton Britt, sister Lorian Baker, Andrew Apostle and his family, Dolores Edwards Hardin, Julian Yoba, Janelle Grant, Mama Hurley and James, Rose Mbeba, Ravina Collins, Maddie Guterres, Jacqueline Bogle, Denise Marshall, Sister Sheila Ray, Carolyn Wasteland, Sister Titi Toure, daughter Abiba Tu and her parents, Doris and granddaughter Wafisa Bacchus, Latosha Quentabam, Justin J, Junior Marshall, Leila Ibrahim, Chantel Small, chosen for such a time as this, 
סימון מורגן, מישל וולס אנד הזבנד וייד, אנטונט לואיס, נטשה פוגו, ג'ורדן ג'וניה, מאדה מיני בנג'מין, אסילה פרסטן, צ'ילדרן טריסן אנד ריין, אר פרודקס, צ'יינה גרינלי, מאמה הרלי אנד ברודר קרייג וייט, אבא פאדר קינג אוף גלורי, אונה פאדר לורד, דיס סיינטס פאדר לורד. And Father, remember them according to Malachi 3.10 and continuously rebuke the devour, the conquer worm, the grasshoppers in their finance bank accounts, Lord God, in their pockets, right into their sources of income, at their jobs, businesses, in their homes, in their vehicles, Lord God, concerning their taxes as well, Lord God, rebuke the devour, the conquer worm, and the grasshoppers. And Father, Lord, open the floodgates of your heavenlies. And Father Lord, bestow upon each one of them such a blessing that they won't have enough storehouse to contain it. Open doors that no man can shut. Father Lord, I speak over their lives, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. The blessings of Abraham. They are the head and not the tail. They are above and not beneath. They shall lend to many nations, but borrow from none. They are like the palm trees planted by the river banks. They will never wither. They will never dry. They shall yield its good fruit in season and out of season. They are like the cedar in Lebanon. They shall grow exponentially, unmovable, unshakable, unbreakable. Father Lord, I speak over the works of their hands that everything that they touch shall prosper and multiply. In Jesus' mighty name. Father Lord, I speak again over the lives that they are like the house on the hill. They cannot be hidden. Therefore, their gifts shall make room for them and bring them before great men. Father Lord, when the enemies come against them one way, they shall flee seven ways because that, Father Lord, is the inheritance. When the enemies come against them, when the enemy comes against them like a flood, you shall raise up a standard for thy servants in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I decree and I declare upon their lives. fresh anointing father lord that the weight of your glory father lord will be upon them father lord grant them father lord clothe them with a robe of praise and righteousness give them a spirit of excellence father lord i pray that today you will open doors that no man can shut that father lord they will not be put to shame father lord i pray for success i pray for an anointing to do great exploits for you lord god I speak over their lives, Father Lord, that they will never lack. They will never beg bread. They will never be put to shame. I speak, Father Lord, promotion, elevation, divine connections. I speak on merited favor. Men shall fight and compete to bless them, Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I pray that today, Lord God, every demonic and satanic blockage will be broken from their lives and destroyed so they can move forward and fulfill purpose resurrect them in their assignment resurrect their prayer altars resurrect their finances resurrect and restore father lord all that the enemy has stolen in jesus mighty name and as far as the sun is from the earth so shall poverty limitation stagnation lack of achievement reproach the plague shame disgrace And death be far away from thy servants. Father Lord, let every trial turn into testimony. Let every test turn into triumph in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, visit also. Let every trial turn into testimony. Let every test turn into triumph in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, visit also. Beth D, Sarah Oguto, Stacey Cunningham, Karen Lewis, Teresa Azinj, Natalie Nyundu. Uh, Musa Toure, her husband, Hussein, and Hussein Toure, and Mother Mariama Toure, Kelvin Calix, Joanna Victorino, Brenda Togo and her family, Antoinette Fleming, Mrs. Erin and her household, Percy Marshall, Bella, McCall, Bella and McCall, Jalisha Simmons, Selena Bradley, Patrice Baptiste, Nisi B, Alice Jones, Children Aaron and Malachi, Doris, Chloe Lynch, Venice Epton, KC, Shane Furtado, Kasai Nelani, Kalaya Williams and Anisha Brown, Danielle Lang, Candice Mack, Lesinga Holcrome, A. Dumas, Toya Thorpe, Daisy Baez, Salmon Lures, Nyembezi Gululu, Nelly Nell, Tania Barush, Sheila Ray, Christopher Birch, Giovanni Holland, Andrew Mayfield, Keshni Kirsty, Jalen uh, Morton, a.k.a. J. Kiki, 
Rashon Stanley, Kechika Mara, Kim Lehman, C. Michelle Johnson, Grandson Khalil, Joyce and Faris Bacchus, Wafiza Bacchus, Giovanni Holland, Owen Peary, Carlin Theus, and Ilana Nelson. Abba Father, King of Glory, everlasting God. You are powerful and you are mighty, Father Lord, to deliver, to heal, to restore. And I pray today, Lord God, fulfill in thy servant's life. Do, Father Lord, Malachi 3.10. And continuously rebuke the devour, the canker worm, the grasshoppers. In your children's finances, bank accounts, in their taxes, concerning their businesses, their jobs, their homes, their vehicles, their property. And open the floodgates of your heavenlies, O Abba Father. And shower upon thy servants such a blessing that they won't have enough storehouse to contain it. I speak all the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 over their lives. Therefore, they are the head and not the tail. They are above and not beneath. They shall lend to many nations but borrow from none. Father Lord, they are like the palm trees planted by the river banks. They will never wither. They will never dry. They shall always yield its good fruit in season and out of season. They are like the cedar in Lebanon. They shall continue to grow unmovable, unshakable, unbreak unbreakable in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I speak over the lives, the blessings of Abraham. Enlarge their coast, enlarge their territory, Lord God. Father Lord, curse those who curse them, but bless those who bless them. Father Lord, I speak over the lives that as far as the sun is from the earth, so shall poverty, limitation, stagnation, lack of achievement, reproach, shame, disgrace, delay, death and plague be far away from thy servants. I speak over their lives a mantle of excellence, a garment of praise, unmerited favor, open doors, divine connections, elevation. I speak over their lives success, that every tri trial will turn into a testimony, every test into triumph in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I speak over their lives that the door that you will open for them today, no man will shut. And that every blockage, every wall of Jericho standing between them and their promised land shall crumble at the mention of your name now so that your children can possess their possession. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Precious saints, in the mighty name of Jesus, may the good Lord bless you. May he continue to shine his face upon you and be merciful unto you. And as you live, remember, you are more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Remember, one with God is always the majority. It shall forever be well with you, precious saints, both ye in the land of the living and in the afterlife. Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for coming and joining me on this journey following Christ. And I pray that you will increase, that you will have a wonderful and restful Shabbat Shalom, that your families are blessed, and God willing saints, I shall see you all tomorrow. And remember, I'm praying for you. Shalom. <laughs>